Today I'll show you how to give this road a crazy drop off and then I'll show you how to add this girl who's living on the edge. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along with me, I've left a download link for today's images in the video description. We'll start off this video by creating the drop off edge on the road. First, we need to make a selection of the area that will drop off. So I'm going to come over here and select the rectangular marquee tool. Then I'm going to click and drag starting from this bottom corner and I'll finish my selection about there. Once you have your selection made, press Command or Control J to duplicate this selection onto its own layer. Then I'll just press Command or Control D to deselect. So now you can see that we have just this lower part of the image on its own layer right here. With that layer selected, I'm going to apply a filter and I'm going to use the perspective filter. I'll go ahead and zoom out a little bit. And now we can play with these little corner nodes to create the perspective that we're going for. So first I'm just going to drag outward like that. And I'll do the same on the other side. And I'm trying to drag outward the same amount on both sides. Then I'm going to drag inward for these bottom nodes. I think I've stretched it a bit too far at the top, so I'm just going to bring this in. It's a good idea to have snapping turned on as you do this, because then your points will snap to the same height. Right now I'm just trying to get these lines to line up the best I can. Alright, and I think that looks pretty good. So now that we've created this drop-off point, we have a few edges here that need to be cropped in. So I'm going to select the Crop tool, and then I'm just going to drag the edges inward. There's a lot of sky in this image, so I'll also drag it downward. Then I'll go ahead and apply this crop. So we have the drop off now, but we're going to make it look even more realistic by adding some strategic lighting. So go ahead and select that layer again, and then click on this FX right here. This will allow us to apply a layer effect only to that layer. I'm going to apply a gradient overlay, so go ahead and click on that section and then check it on. Then I'm going to change the angle to going downward. So now you can see by default we have a gradient going from black to white. This will look good as we change the blend mode because we'll have more shadows up here and then it will get lighter. To change the blend mode I'll just come right up here and I'm going to select multiply. You can see that this looks pretty intense but if we lower the opacity to around 50% I think that looks pretty good and now this drop off looks a lot more realistic. So with the drop off done, this already looks really cool. To add some extra pizzazz to this image, let's add a person sitting on the edge. I've chosen this image. Just to save some time in this video, I've already selected her and cut her out of the background. In the video description, you'll find a link to this exact affinity file that you can use for your project too. To learn exactly how I selected her, you can check out my how to remove backgrounds video and I'll link that in the description as well. I'm going to press command or control C to copy this image. Then returning to my road document, I'll press command or control V to paste her in. Then using the move tool, I can go ahead and shrink her down to the size that I want. I know this isn't to scale, but it's just for fun for this effect, so I think this size looks pretty good. Now that we have our model in the document, it's time to blend her into this new background. 
We'll need to fix the lighting and the colors of her layer. So let's start with the lighting. First, I'm going to go to our adjustments and I'll apply a levels adjustment. I'll make this a child layer to our model so that only her layer is affected. Now it looks like the background is a little bit more faded and gray than our model's image. So I'm going to use the output black level and I'll just drag that over and you can see that she becomes a bit more faded and less contrasted as I drag that over. I'll also drag over the output white level to make the whites appear a little bit more grayed out. And I think I'm also going to shift the gamma slider over to make her a little bit darker. All right, and I think that's a pretty good start. Her lighting already looks better for this image. However, I think she could look a little bit darker to fit in better. So I'm going to add a curves adjustment. And then I'll just bring this downward to darken her. So now that we have that lighting sorted out, I'm going to select the background layer, which is underneath her group, and then I'm going to add a new pixel layer. Using this pixel layer, I'm going to add some shadows underneath our subject. So I'll grab the paintbrush tool, and then I'll make sure I have 0% hardness and a flow of around 8%. It doesn't really matter how low this is, just make sure that it's pretty low. Then using black paint and a large brush, I'm just going to start creating a shadow under her legs on this side. Then using a smaller brush, I'm going to go under her hand and in that little area right there to create a shadow for her. Now this already looks pretty good just to ground her down, but I'm going to use an even smaller brush and then I'm going to go back and forth a little bit more to create a darker shadow really close to where her hand is touching the ground and anywhere where she's making contact with the ground. This type of shadow is called a contact shadow and it's just a shadow that gets really dark wherever you're touching and it'll help to really ground her. Now in this area, I think I painted a little too much. So I'm going to grab the eraser tool and I already have my eraser tool set quite low, so 0% hardness and a flow of 6%. Then I'm just going to paint over that area to remove that shadow. And using the paintbrush tool, I'll just put it back, but try to be a little less heavy handed this time. And then I'll do the same thing over here with her other hand. Adding a contact shadow like this will just make it look like she's not floating in space quite as much. All right, I think the shadows are looking pretty good now. Here's the before and here's the after. You can always go back and add a little more shading, but I think this is looking pretty good so far. Now that the lighting looks good, let's figure out how to fix her colors. I think her red shirt is very saturated for this image and I just want to reduce that. So I'm going to select the curves adjustment so that this layer appears inside of the group. Then I'll go to the adjustments and apply an HSL adjustment. And you can see that's appeared as a child layer, just like the other adjustments. So I'm just going to lower the saturation down to around negative 32 looks pretty good. You can see that now she just matches the background a lot better. Selecting all of those lighting and color adjustments, you can see what she looked like before, and here's the after to make her blend into the background better. So now that she matches up with the background really well, we can add some adjustments to the whole image to finish it up. I just want to add some extra contrast to this image because as you saw, we had to gray out our subject quite a bit to match the background, and I just think the whole background would look better with some contrast. So I'm going to add a levels adjustment on top of all of our layers. Then I'm just going to bring the black level over to add in some contrast. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Now you can see the before and after of adding in our subject. 
And there we have it. Our Living on the Edge project is complete. If you want to learn more affinity tricks, be sure to check out my free course in the video description where you'll learn 10 simple steps to make any photo amazing. Thanks for watching my friends, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.